Well, we're kicking off the start of a very special series of stories tonight. It's called Friends for Life. And they're all personal stories dealing with health issues that impact women. And they're all from the women of Six News. And Krista Lavandola joins us. Now, Krista, the story that you're bringing tonight is very special. It's about having breast cancer, being breast cancer free for seven years, and then not knowing about it. Exactly. That's exactly what happened to one woman in Michigan. After years and years of mammogram testing, it hit a tumor and having that tumor flipped her world um, upside down. Mm -hmm. She had cancer and I talked to this courageous woman about her story and why she says for certain women, a mammogram test just isn't enough. I'm Teresa Hendricks Pitch and I'm four years past chemotherapy. It's been a long road since Pitch started her journey with breast cancer, a journey she never expected to begin. When I heard the words, you have invasive lobular carcinoma, I thought, well, no, how can that be? Crystal Lamandola joins us now with the second part of her report. Now, yesterday you told us about a woman who had breast cancer for seven years but didn't even know it. Shane Jerry, that's right. That's doctors couldn't see Teresa Hendricks pitches breast cancer because her breasts were so dense they it hid her tumorous cancer on her routine mammograms. Mm -hmm. So now Teresa is cancer free, but even after she got a clean bill of health, she continued to fight for a bill that that would help other women like herself catch cancer sooner. I think of my life as before the diagnosis and after. Just like many women, Teresa had dense breasts, a condition where breast tissue lights up on a mammogram the same way tumors do. But even after years of mammograms, she never knew her breasts were dense until she was diagnosed with cancer. They all said, boy, this cancer was really hidden on mammograms from the density. We've never seen anything like this before. And I thought, how come they all know that? And nobody tells women that. Under federal law, women are required to get a letter with mammogram results. But the letters don't have to tell them they have dense breasts. It all started with aviation, or lack of a better word, the art of flying. One of the reasons why thunderstorms is such a problem is that uh, you literally can't fly into them and if you have a lot of dense clouds obscuring uh, the way, uh, it makes it very difficult to see these things. Using his degree in aerospace, Dr. David Straley started researching ways to bring technology that's used in meteorology to medicine. We're using ground-based, highly accurate radars that operate very similar to an MRI scanner uh, in finding thunderstorms that are obscured by dense clouds, just like uh, the problem we're having with uh, mammograms with the dense breast tissue obscuring uh, active breast cancer. Dr. Straley, who taught people how to fly while he was learning how to practice medicine, got a phone call from a student one day. Uh, he called up and said, I have a real problem. One of my daughters has breast cancer and I don't think she's going to survive. That led to a two-year research study where he scanned 671 women who had negative mammograms. And what he found is astonishing. The research showed that we were picking the cancers up four to six years sooner than uh, the mammograms in women with dense breast tissue. According to Dr. Straley, mammograms are less than 50% accurate in women with dense breasts, meaning that a woman could be checked off as good to go when there could be a slight chance she isn't. Tonight, it is my turn, and we all know that prevention is the key to living a long and healthy life. So what are the best methods to do that? Well, for me, it turns out I need to do a couple of things when it comes for screenings for breast cancer. That's because I have dense breast tissue. It's a condition we've talked about all week here on 6 News, and basically it means like women for me, like me, we have less fatty tissue and more non-fatty tissue compared to younger women. It also means it can sometimes be more difficult to spot potential breast cancer. I share my story with you in the hopes that someone watching will know you're not alone. Like most women who see their doctor every year for a regular checkup, I also follow the recommended guidelines to get a mammogram. But the older I've gotten, the more those mammograms hurt. I experienced a lot of pain with mammograms from the compression. I talked to my doctor about it, and she recommended that I see a breast specialist. And it was that doctor who told me for the first time in my life that I had dense breast tissue. And I found out I have fibrocystic breast disease. Well, it sounds worse than it really is, and basically they're benign cysts in addition to having dense tissue, which explained why I experience pain after a mammogram. This is going to come right down on you and be really, really tight. 
He also said the condition is hereditary. Hereditary? Well, I asked my mom about it, and she said, oh, yeah, I have that, too. We just never talked about it. That's when my breast specialist suggested that I get an MRI. 30 more seconds, and the scan will start up. You know, Christy wanted to share her story with you. She said, you know what? I'd give anything not to have cancer. But if my story can help one person, I'm going to do it. And here we are telling Christy's story for the third time just shy of two years after doctors diagnosed her with breast cancer. But this story doesn't have a happy ending. It was really hard when people would say to you, she's in a better place. I just wanted to say no. Her better place is here with us, with her son. In May of 2013, Christy, her mom Janice, and the rest of her family found out she had triple negative breast cancer. My initial thought was, okay, breast cancer. Women do really well nowadays on breast cancer, you know. She's young, we'll get through that, it'll be okay. And, you know, just the more I read on it, the more I found out about it, it's like it was not going to be okay. Treatment started immediately. Multiple surgeries, chemotherapy, radiation, but nothing could stop it from spreading. And after suffering through the worst chapter in her life, her life ended. About 20% of the women who have breast cancer will have a triple negative tumor. Uh, only about 30% of those tumors will respond to chemotherapy. It appears to affect mostly younger women. Younger women are those in the premenopausal age group. Uh, African Americans are particularly uh, susceptible. Women in their 20s fighting breast cancer. It's still a foreign concept for many people, including some health professionals. They kind of checked and then double checked and they were like, this is, you know, not what I think it is, is it? Like, you know, you're too young. He said, you know, I'm really sorry, but it did come back. It's cancer. I couldn't hold the tears back. And in addition to Christy's short physical fight, she fought an emotional one as well. Dr. Bumpers would say, okay, when you call for your wig, you tell them you need a cranial prosthesis. I'm writing you a script for it. It's covered under Blue Cross. She called up and she cried. She called me crying at work and said, Mom, they laughed at me. I said, what do you mean they laughed at you? The lady at Blue Cross, I told her I needed a cranial prosthesis. And she goes, oh, you mean a wig? And she started laughing. I went to Christie's funeral service here in Hazlitt back in September, and although I only knew her for a short time, she changed my life forever. A young woman, very scared, very much in pain, and yet so brave to share her very personal story with all of you so that what happened to her doesn't happen to you. I feel comfort in knowing where she's at because of my faith, and I feel comfort that knowing that she's not suffering anymore and that she's whole again and that she's happy again. I might have only had her for 30 years. <laughs> but I'm so glad I got those 30 years because we had an amazing daughter. I know I'm going to see her again someday. Thank you, Siobhan, for sharing that story with us. We have more information on the triple negative breast cancer under the scene on six section of our website, WLNS.com. Another successful Susan G. Komen race for the Cure in Michigan is in the books. And sure, you emceed that event yes, yesterday in downtown Lansing. And didn't you tell me about 3,000 people yeah, about came well out, attended. ran or walked, mm -hmm. all to support local women and men who've been touched by breast cancer. And as Emily Walls tells us tonight, the organization created something new this year for one special group of people. It's sure different when they say those words. I'm sorry, you have cancer. Words heard way too many times by Patricia, her and I, and her family. Her mother, her older sister, her younger sister, her daughter, her niece, and Patricia herself are either battling the disease or fought hard but lost. I'm really scared about my daughter having it. That's hard. That was a hard one. And she came up positive, so we're just going to take the steps as they present themselves. Patricia is a survivor, her daughter a fighter. And it's those fighters currently undergoing treatment or recovering from it that Susan G. Komen organizers wanted to highlight at this year's race. So let's hear it right now for our fighters and metastatic breast cancer patients. 
We continue our special series tonight called Friends for Life. They're personal stories dealing with health issues that impact women. What would you do if you found a lump on your breast? How would it change your life? Well, when Nancy Berger first found a lump on her left breast, she went searching for answers. She was diagnosed with breast cancer back in November of 2011 and received 20 weeks of chemotherapy along with six and a half weeks of radiation. But it did more than change her health. It changed her outlook on life. Here's Nancy. Nancy's story. Nancy's story began, as many do, by finding a lump. It was just there, and I asked my husband about it, and he didn't think much of it at the time either, and so we just kind of let it go. She went to the doctor weeks later for a regularly scheduled visit. It was there that her doctor ordered a mammogram, an ultrasound, and later a biopsy. When we went into the biopsy, we, we, just, we just figured it was just one of those things, you know random lump. Um, coming out of the biopsy, we knew that the surgeon was able to tell us at that point that he had concerns. Nancy and her husband knew at that time that it was breast cancer, and they knew they wanted to be treated close to home at Allegiance Health in Jackson. So she had a mix of cancers. Um, it was an invasive ductal carcinoma, which is the most common breast cancer in combination with an in situ cancer, which is a dormant cancer which could you know develop into an invasive cancer on the first day of treatment she cried there's this woman standing here with with biohazard material gear on putting this into my body and at that moment it's it's another moment of of clarity of how how overwhelming this whole process is Dr. James Herman has been treating cancer patients as a radiation oncologist at Lansing Sparrow Hospital for the past 30 years. During that time, he's lived passionately by his philosophy on how cancer care should be delivered. It will now be the cornerstone of a new cancer center that will bear his name. One doesn't do it for the brick and mortar, but yet in the end, what are you going to have? You're going to have a philosophy that has been transformed into this new center. Not only the patients, but their caregivers as well will benefit from this team approach. Espera will bring all of its oncology treatments under one roof. And I remember the first time when they first brought this, the architectural firm brought this uh -huh. as a design. This was what everybody thought, oh, something new, something looking quite uh, innovative, mm -hmm. hopeful, futuristic. It will be called the Herbert Herman Cancer Center. Judith Herbert is a cancer survivor, and Dr. Herman was her oncologist. It's a time many consider to be the prime of their life. Young love, a proposal, a fairy tale wedding, followed by news that a baby is on the way. Amber Myers and her husband Chris were on top of the world. I loved being pregnant, just loved it. Perfectly, blissfully ignorant. Ignorant to the fact that cancer was quickly growing in her left breast. Or was she? Two years before, Amber had actually found the lump, but told it was a cyst and not to worry, so she didn't. But as she and Chris prepared to welcome their first baby into the world, they found out that was a bad decision. I was about 30 weeks pregnant and this cyst had doubled in size. Once again, they had it checked and once again told it was a cyst, but this time they would do an ultrasound to be sure. And at 36 weeks pregnant, they learned that a baby wasn't the only thing about to change their lives. We don't know if it spread, but they're like, we need to kind of get this baby out of here mm -hmm. so we can get going with chemo. So that's what they did. Despite her birth plan for a natural delivery, at 37 weeks pregnant, Amber delivered a healthy baby girl they named Chloe. What they didn't know at the time was that Chloe's umbilical cord was wrapped tightly around her neck and head and that that cancer-induced C-section likely saved her life. You know, you hear people say that they're thankful for cancer for different reasons, and that's that's my biggest one, is it saved my daughter's life, and I would trade a breast and, you know, a year of my life with cancer treatments for my daughter any day.